The next day, on the commute to school, Majita showed her determination by pulling Kuro aside first thing in the morning. どう<笑> They were just making casual conversation, or at least that's what it sounded like. I was pretty sure that Machida was actually trying to find a way to get Crow away from me. I told Crow not to tell a soul about our plans for this afternoon, but I still worried whether she'd actually let it slip. Didi popped up out of the corner of my eye, gazing intently at my face. Oh, uh, just that I can't really tell if those two are getting along. I understand my sister's feelings, though. You seem relaxed enough. But let me ask, just so I can be sure. Are you in cahoots with Machiri and the others? I asked her in a voice quiet enough the other two wouldn't hear me. From that response, I can already tell they, they filled you in on it. What a pain. Huh? You're not against it. Man, you're a good girl, Didi. I responded with a mixture of surprise and gratitude. Not really. Oh, right. That kind of turned me on. No, get a grip. Didi, can you really cheer on someone else when your own life is teetering in the balance? Not who I choose? Thank you. Her dazzling smile threatened to make me fall in love with her all over again. Well, I'm kind of interested in Crow too, but we should be careful when Machiru is around. Hmm? I can understand Masaki, but Makoto too? In that case, I'll keep your advice in mind. Even though Didi hadn't known the other girls as long as I had, as a fellow girl, she might have been clued into something that would have totally slipped past my radar. In any case, I just had to play it cool until school let out today. I went to school and attended class, trying to avoid any long conversations with Crow so that we wouldn't draw any undue attention to ourselves. I passed my time at school the same way I always did. I was a little worried about what Didi said to me, so I found myself stealing glances at Makoto in between classes, but nothing seemed to have changed. No, wait. She wasn't even talking to her friends. She looked like she was zoning out. That was actually a little weird in itself. Suddenly, Makoto noticed that I was looking at her. I shrugged my shoulders as if to say it's nothing. She responded by smiling back at me. Then she looked away with a smile still on her lips. Now I was sure. She was acting more than a little weird. I wanted to know what was up with her, but I decided that it was smarter to let sleeping dogs lie.
School ended soon after that, and I left the classroom alone. Since Makoto was in the same class as us, she would notice if Crow and I walked home together. Passing through the school gate, I fired off a text to Crow. I waited until I had left the school grounds to tell her of our appointed meeting place. Since she had no realization of how the other girls felt, Crow was naturally confused. Let's just call it a game of cat and mouse. Well, that means you're living a fulfilling life, so it's a good thing. There's gonna be tests before that, though. Oh, that reminds me. What's going to happen with your tests? Man, I'm jealous. They can't let you off too easy. Well, I'm looking forward to summer break. Isn't it the opposite? We both looked at each other with puzzled expressions. Once summer break starts, you don't have to go to school, so most people spend their time playing around. I guess it depends on your point of view. We both shrugged our shoulders. Well, it was Crow's first time experiencing the student lifestyle, and it would be her first time experiencing a long furlough as well. She just started to imagine what the beginning of summer break would feel like, but she still didn't know the feeling of summer break coming to an end. Do you have any requests? <laughs> Sweets? I don't mind, but you're seriously starting to sound like some kind of famished cartoon character. I've barely ever seen Crow eat anything outside of mealtimes, so she still wasn't familiar with the kind of desserts that people eat for flavor rather than nutritional value. Alright, then let's get you something sticky and sweet. I pulled out my smartphone while walking. I didn't have any particular store in mind, but I could certainly look up recommendations for places which serves especially good sweets online. Even though she'd only learned how to walk a short time ago, Crow had already learned how to skip. Following the directions my phone gave me, we went to a cafe on the road leading from the station to the shopping district. I had seen it from the outside a few times, but one could say this place had four distinguishing characteristics into it. It was a high-class, open-air cafe where the prices were high and the clientele were mostly girls. I would never even been in a place like this before. Then. Crow couldn't help but voice her excitement upon seeing the parfait brought to our table. Crow held her spoon like a child, examining every inch of the parfait from every angle. Aren't you gonna eat it? 
食べる前にパフェがどういうものかじっくり観察しておきたいのだ。Well, I'm just saying you might want to start on it before the ice cream starts to melt. Not my problem, I guess. Although, even I had to admit that it was quite the an intricately decorated dessert. It was certainly a feast, not just for the taste buds, but for the eyes as well. Compared to the cola I was drinking, which was also served in a fancy glass, her parfait cost more than twice as much. Since I was your typical dirt poor student, I hesitated to get another parfait for myself. <laughs> What is it? どこから手をつけたらいいのかと。もう、これをこのままお持ち帰りして、部屋に飾っておけないか。触ったりの家宝にしてもよいのだぞ。ちょっと待って。Why do you think we came here in the first place? An, an, an heirloom? How pointless is that? It's so pointless. Did I have to tell you off three times in a row? No, I'm paying. Like I said, what we ordered today was all my treat. No, you are. これをご主人に支払ってもらう理由がなかろう。Why? I was intending to pay from the very beginning, but I had to think for a second about the reason why. The only reason that came to mind was an incredibly simple and clear one. It's because you're a girl? お主は何を言っておるのだ Uh, never mind. Just hurry and eat it before it melts. Crow was strangely pumped up about the first bite of the parfait that she put into her mouth. Crow's sudden reaction surprised me too. There was nothing I could say to that. I had certainly seen my fair share of cute girls enjoying desserts with blissful expressions, but it was actually impressive how extreme her reaction was. There were also plenty of other girls at the table around us giving her surprised glances. Ugh, is it really that good? Glad to hear that. <laughs> Seeing a girl wearing such a happy smile on her face was contagious. I found myself smiling too. I'm glad I invited her to do this. Someone would have taken her to the shop sooner or later, even if I didn't. So being the first patient to see her smile like this was quite a stroke of luck. Since we're here, why don't we get a cake too? There's quite a few different options though. I wanted to see her smile more. Oh, so we're back to that? Go ahead and eat! But listen to what I'm trying to tell you. 
You might not like it, but this is a human tradition, so you're supposed to let me pay for your meal. I can see that. Now I just have to worry about the possibility of her being kidnapped by someone offering her candy. Don't overthink it so much. But anyway, just eat for now. Another bite. The smooth swing of hers was amusing in itself. Well, uh, I was just saying that if a boy and a girl go somewhere to eat, then if the boy offers to pay, it's courtesy for the girl to accept. Of course, there's exceptions to that rule. Alright. It was hard to explain it to her. No, it wasn't hard, but it was hard. Well, you know, it's just a matter of wanting to show generosity towards a girl. A man has his pride and all that. Well, that reminds me. Back when Mew and I went shopping for clothes, I told her the same thing. It's not just me. Michiru, Makoto, and all the other customers in the store right now are viewing you as a girl. Hmm? With my straw still in my mouth, I tilted my head to the side of curiosity. そもそもこんなことにならなければ、我が輩以外の誰かと話はこうやって遊ぶことができたはずなのに。そうだ。せっかく二人きりなのだから聞いておくが、今の話は誰が本命なのだ？うーん。Hey, you got me all wrong here, Missy. Crow, let me make something clear for you. You're not, you're just as cute as the other girls, alright? Mm -hmm. This time, Crow stared at me blankly. In this situation, I had the option to simply drop the subject, since she was dense enough to not have gotten the message yet. But instead, I decided to just come right out and say it. I'm trying to tell you that you're one of my potential romantic interests, too. I'm still not certain about anything yet, but as a girl in front of me right now, I like you. That's pretty much what I meant, but I'm not getting through to you. Some, am I not getting through to you somehow? I mean, I did just say I like you. Looking directly into her eyes, I came right out and said it, which made her shoulders shake nervously. Is that a problem? No, it's all right. I brushed it aside. Crow was awkward when it came to matters of love, just like Mew and Makoto were. But Crow had a very different reason for being that way. Honestly, even I wasn't sure how she felt about what I had just told her. By the way, your ice cream is melting. 
You should calm down and eat it. Crow obediently started spooning the mouthfuls of the ice cream. Then a great big smile appeared on her face. That night, Machiba suddenly came into my room and spoke a single sentence which made me freeze on the spot. N no, there's a good reason for that. I can't lie to you, Michiru. And I don't want to lie to you. I don't want to lie, if I don't have to. I guess you'd know that better than anyone. You always have been honest with yourself about every slightest whim. I whispered that last sentence under my breath, hoping she wouldn't hear it. You heard me. She grinned. Do you understand what I'm doing? She was definitely in on something I wasn't. My brow furrowed at her words. Machiru smiled. The very fact that the smile was not receding from her face was the clearest signal of all that she was worried about what I was doing. So that girlfriend who was on me with the monorail. There's a possibility it could have been Crow, isn't there? That was my answer. Crow had been stripped of her original purpose as the goddess method of communicating with humans, because she had become more friendly with humans than was necessary. Which was why the goddess' true form had appeared before me. For her to kill a part of herself was meaningless, so she wished to kill me instead. Such was the simplistic fashion in which she made her decisions. Anna proved that this method of thinking was really how she thought, but it certainly made sense. By the rest of us, do you mean Masaki and Mio? Hmm. It wasn't all that surprising for those three to be involved. Rather, it was the other two girls' names not being mentioned that was surprising. Perhaps it was only because they were in a different grade level, but DVD, Didi and Makoto were the exceptions. So, if you don't intend to stop me, did you only come here to say that to me? Huh? Have you thought of something? I quietly listened to her. She had an idea that would save my life without exposing me to danger. That would be perfect for me too. Oh. I see what you mean. It was a terribly simple idea. But that won't work at all. You can't destroy this watch. Not because I won't let you, but because this watch is physically unbreakable. The pocket watch would turn back time if it was broken, and for an hour after that, it would be completely unbreakable no matter what you did. It was protected by the power of time. Maybe that'd work if you threw the pocket watch into the sea, but 
Something terrible could happen once I let go of the pocket watch. And by then I'll have sealed my fate, since I won't be able to turn back time anymore. It's like Catch-22. Say, by we I'm guessing you just mean Mew for the most part. Should have guessed it. What? That was a shock to hear. Stop. I cut Mashiro off before she could finish her sentence. I don't care if it's just an idea. Stop. Machida quietly bowed her head. However, there was a fierce determination in Machida's unseeing eyes. Is that something you managed to confirm? My head's spinning. Doesn't that sound like a declaration of war? So in all actuality, how motivated are you to do this, Machiru? Do you really intend to take action against Crow? I was going to give her a stern warning if she said yes, but Machiru just shrugged her shoulders. Well, I'm going to object. Your perspective is scaring me here. Just so we're on the same page. Even if it'd be in the name of saving my life, you're not going to do anything to stop Crow? Bravo. I was a bit shocked, but I was actually grateful to hear that. Her own degenerate morality had turned back on itself and become virtuous, like some kind of Ouroboros. Honestly, I would expect nothing less from my little sister. So is that all? Sorry to drag you into this. I owed her an apology. In the end, this entire dilemma had all started with that pocket watch, with Chrono's clock. Well, to you, I should say, I hope I can count on you. Honestly, despite everything happen has that's happened with Crow, I still like you, and I definitely have a soft spot in my uh, for my little sister. So, please don't be too hard on me. Machida responded with a slow nod, and a voice whose true feelings I was unable to discern. Go back to your room. I don't have the will to let you do that right now. I had to prevent myself from getting into that situation, since I wouldn't be able to resist her if it actually happened. When you be standing your pillow and st Wait, on second thought, I don't want to hear the details. Yeah, good night. While keeping my guard up, I watched her leave the room and close the door. Ugh. 
I sighed as I laid back down on the bed. My gaze idly wandered across the ceiling. The cheetah's fragrance still lingered in the room. Up until now, I had thought that things would progress peacefully, since the only problem was whether or not I was willing to risk my life, but now I was starting to realize that all the other girls who had been my reliable allies for so long could soon become obstructions to me. They're just too reliable! That was almost funny in itself. Just as Didi had said, Machiru wasn't all that dangerous owing to her honesty. Me was safe too. Didi could have become dangerous in a way, given her obstinance about following through on any decision she made, but she had already given up given me her support. In that case, it was really just Masaki and Makoto who could end up causing trouble for me. Guess I'll have to double check a little something tomorrow then. What could come of it? I unconsciously grimaced as I muttered to myself. Something's gotta give here. I know it. Despite complaining to myself, for some reason I was looking forward to it. It's only been 30 minutes, but I guess I'll go ahead and end this here as well. Looks like we're still on the road to destruction, but I have this, I have a strong feeling that the end of this will be uh, a good ending all around. Hopefully we don't... Hopefully it's not a bitter ending. I hate those. Hopefully it's a good ending. Uh, there will be another episode tomorrow, same time. Uh, 1 p.m. Uh, I think it's Pacific Standard Time. I could be wrong. But yeah, I hope you uh, enjoyed this, this shorter episode. I realize I've gotten a few comments that say it's too long. The reason why it's so long is because the person who bought this game for me wants it to be this long. Just so you know. Actually, they want me to play for like two hours at a time, but I can't do that. I don't have the uh, the voice for it. And with all that, with all that being said, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned tomorrow for the next chapter. <laughs>